today I'm going to show you how to make this spicy comfort fish stew called Dongtae Meontang. And this spicy fish stew is beloved by Koreans. We eat this on a regular basis because it's spicy, it's garlicky, and then the broth is so light and clean tasting. It literally just like cleanses your soul. <laughs> That's how delicious it is. And then the fish just like melts in your mouth. So good. And guess what? This dish is actually healthy for you. It's a great way to introduce more fish into your diet. 오늘의 레시피 칼칼하고 아주 맛있는 동태 매운탕 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. The ingredient list is available in the description box below as well as the Korean product links that you could order online. We are going to make the seasoning paste for our meontang. So we need one tablespoon of finely ground Korean red pepper flakes called Kun gochugaru. And we need half a tablespoon of the coarse ground gochugaru. There's no difference in taste. When you use the finely ground gochugaru, it instantly brightens up the color of your soup or whatever you're making. So you could just use either one if you don't have both. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of mirim. So this is Korean cooking wine. If you cannot have alcohol, just skip it. Or you could use one tablespoon of your favorite white wine that you would have with dinner. And I have one tablespoon of gukkanjang. So this is soy sauce for your broths. But if you don't have that, just use all-purpose Korean soy sauce. And then we need one tablespoon of finely minced garlic, half tablespoon of fish sauce, and half tablespoon of doenjang. So doenjang is your fermented soybean paste. It's different from miso paste. This is Korean, miso is Japanese. And to this we need quarter teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. Then I want you to mix this up so that it looks like this. Nice and thick paste. You could make this ahead of time and store it in the fridge and let it ferment for a week or even a month or two months and this will taste so much better as it ferments in the fridge. But we're gonna use it right away. But if you are gonna store it in the fridge for that long, make sure that you are using an airtight container. So we need Korean radish called mu. And if you cannot get Korean radish, you could use these small, round, pink, red radishes. And we need about 55 gram-ish. So this is about two slices of our Korean radish cut into small, little, bite-sized pieces like so. This is a must. And we also need half a block, which is about eight ounces of firm or extra firm tofu, dubu, a half of a small white onion, one scallion. This is optional if you wanna add a little extra kick, some few slices of red pepper. It's more for garnishing. Here I have some sukkat, which is crown daisies. If you can't get this, then use cilantro or Italian parsley. I have a few slices of Mexican gray squash, ehobak, and enoki mushroom. And these are colored fish cakes, really again for that pretty garnish. All right, now on to our star ingredient. Dongtae. Dongtae is Polak fish, but you can use any white fish of your choice. Just make sure that it is bone-in fish. When it comes to making meontang, Korean fish stew, you must use bone-in fish because the bone-in adds that extra delicious magical flavor to our stew, so it's a must. Now, when it comes to cooking any fish at home, here is a very, very important tip that I want to share with you. Your fish, you need to smell it and it should not smell fishy. If it smells fishy, don't use it. 
It should smell like the ocean, salty ocean. And you could use frozen fish, you could use fresh fish from your fishmonger. What is also important is when you bring your fish home from the market or right after you thaw out your frozen fish, you must use it within 24 hours. I went to a friend's house, a dear friend, and she had her fish out in the fridge and she said, oh my God, I'm gonna make this delicious fish stew on Friday, and it was Monday, and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> By Friday, it's gonna be disgusting and smelly fish, ooh. I'm gonna show you how to take apart this whole fish. It is very easy to do, but if you don't have the stomach to watch this, I want you to skip to the timeline that you see right here, okay? I'll see you there. First, make sure to cut all these parts off. We're gonna cut the tail end off here. There's a little hole here already made for you. So all you have to do is take your kitchen shears and go in all the way. Cut the other way, about two inches down, that's about it. Now have your compost bag ready. Open this up and you'll notice this is a fish roe. And normally I would add this to the stew, but it doesn't look so healthy. So I would not eat that. Just using a spoon, just scrape out all the in intestine in the cavity. This part is all done. This is the messiest part. And then you would just need to rinse it now. Then rinse the fish in running cold water. So just rinse out the cavity. Now, most fish come with the scale already removed, but if you happen to have one that has a scale on, what you wanna do is take your knife and you wanna start from the tail end and you push it down this way to take off any scale that's on the skin of the fish. It is very, very important to not eat fish with some scale. So this one, you can still see there's a little bit of scale left, but they did a good job processing this. But you see, that's the scale of the fish that you wanna really take off as much as possible. Now we're gonna just cut this up into blocks. I love having the head with my stew, but most people don't. So I'm not gonna include it in today's recipe. And then just cut them into about two inch blocks. Our tail end, cut it again. And there we have it. So for our Dongte Meontang recipe today, we need about less than 600 grams of Polak fish or any white fish bone in. It must be bone in fish, no filet fish, folks. Using a heavy bottom pot, I'm using tukbegi, which is Korean earthenware clay pot. You must get this if you make lots of Korean stews and soups. And to this, we're gonna add four cups of water, about one liter of water. Put the lid on and set your heat to high and bring the water to boil. Now, once our water comes to boil like so, we're gonna add one pack of our tashi pack. We're gonna drop it in here and we're gonna put the lid on and let this boil on high heat for five minutes. Tashi pack contains dried sea kelp, dried anchovies, dried shrimp, and some dried vegetables. And you could order these tashi packs online if you can't get to a Korean market. Alternatively, you could add three to five of these long dried anchovies called tashi merchi with two small pieces of dried sea kelp. And if you don't have those, just add one teaspoon of fish sauce now. Five minutes later, we're gonna take out our tashi pack, put it in our bowl. Then I want you to squeeze any excess liquid and dump it back in here. This is precious gold liquid that we don't wanna waste. And then we're gonna take our seasoning paste that we made earlier, just dump everything in here. Make sure to scrape every last bit of it. Just mix everything up. Your heat remains at high. Then we're gonna add our Korean radish and our fish. We're just gonna put it in here right now. And we're just gonna add our onions. Make sure to squish down the onions so it's cooking in our broth. This is the easy part. With your heat remaining at high, we're gonna put our lid on just halfway like that. We're gonna cook this for eight minutes. So it's been eight minutes. Let's take a look. <gasps> look at that. So you see the foam of this red cloud? 
you want to take it out. It could be a little bitter. That's just the foam from the, the red pepper flakes that we added, gochugaru. I'm going to lower my heat for medium for now. And I want you to go in and have a taste. Oh, look at that. Mmm, <gasps> oh. It's spicy, it's garlicky, and then the fish broth is just... It's cleansing. It's that delicious. It's just clean tasting. I think the only thing that would make this like even better is if you add maybe like a half a teaspoon of merti dashita, that is bullion powder using dried anchovies. That just will take it to another level of deliciousness. If you don't have that, just add like maybe one or two pinches of MSG if you like, or just leave it as is. Really delicious. Okay, so we're gonna turn our heat back up to high. So I want you to kind of move the fish to the side a little bit. And then we're gonna put our tofu in like that on one side. And tofu's already cooked, so you don't really need to cook this per se. We're just literally just heating it up in this hot broth with our fish. And then we're gonna add our zucchini ehobak on top and just get some of the broth and put it over our tofu and our squash. And we're just gonna let this finish cooking for one minute on high heat. All right, so a minute later, we're gonna just finish garnishing. We're just gonna put our scallions on one side, our enoki mushrooms on one side right here, our sukkah on one side like that, then our pretty fish cake like so, and then our red peppers like that in the middle. <gasps> Doesn't it look good? <laughs> All right, now you just gotta enjoy this ASAP. Oh, this is like the ultimate Korean facial. <laughs> and it's delicious. Oh my God. You must always start with the broth when it comes to Korean soups and stews, in my opinion. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I told you that this broth is like the cleansing broth for your soul. And I'm not lying, it's the truth. It's the truth. You know what makes it better? A little soju. No flavored soju, okay? You know, there's a Korean saying, adults drink regular original soju. Like the flavored soju is for the kids. That's what we say. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Come back. Now I feel perfect. Let's dig in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Get some of the broth. Look at that. All right, so after I make myself a serving bowl of everything from this pot, I go in for the fish first. Oh yeah, look how moist and light and sweet our fish looks. Mmm, mmm, mmm speechless it, it just melts in your mouth it has that it still has that firm texture but it's soft and it has a sweet aftertaste from the fish yes fish when it's really really fresh it has a sweet aftertaste that's what makes fish so good in my opinion wow and then after i have the fish i get myself a spoonful of korean rice and i dunk it in here and then I make myself a perfect spoonful. Oh my God, <laughs> if I could feed you, I would, I would. This is just too good to not share with people that you really enjoy being with, right? <sighs> okay, bon appetit everyone. Mm. The red pepper that we added at the end, it's taking over my mouth, but in a, such a good way, it's spicy and it just, brings out the flavors of the broth even more. Amazing. <laughs> Friday night, Saturday night, or weeknight, have this with soju and life is a lot better, in my opinion. Now, if you wanna check out more Korean soups and stews, make sure to go to my channel at youtube.com slash modernpepper. Click on that playlist tab and select Korean soups and stews and I will see you there. I want to 
to thank you for watching today and if you enjoyed watching today's video as always i would greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can make more korean dishes together 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러 주세요 다음 영상에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다 감사합니다 all right folks i will see you in one of the videos you see right here